Welcome back to Ram Dragon Art and Games. This is Jason coming to you with a new art project that not really new for me, but I want to show you this. Forgive the glare. Uh, unfortunately, with glass, there's not much you can do, but if I tilt it to the side, you can kind of get a really good look at it. Now, I don't know if you can quite see on the camera here. But if I tilt it, uh, you can't quite see it. Uh, this glass is about three millimeters thick, and I've painted the TARDIS on the front side of the glass. And that space scape is painted directly on the back side of the glass. So there's actually a separation there and a little bit of a drop shadow behind the TARDIS, <laughs> which, when it stands up, looks much better than when it's laying down. But it creates enough of a separation that uh, you get a really good sense of depth there. And I keep this on my desk. It looks fantastic on my desk. I, I love it a lot. What I don't particularly care for is this chrome border. Now these came on the picture frames. What I did is on the back there was a pocket attached to the glass and I tore that off and cleaned up the glass really good. So, we're going to be doing one of those today, and I wanted to do just a really quick to show you. This is the reason why I always visit the clearance section at local Hobby Lobby. Uh, these are normally like three or four bucks. I picked this up for 50 cents. <laughs> it's just, it's acrylic, it's not glass, but I'm going to show you some of the techniques we're going to be employing on our project today. The first of which, let me shake up my paint here. Now this is just normal crafting paint, uh, the, the cheap crafter's acrylic paint that you can get. But I've mixed it with uh, some Liquitex gloss medium and some uh, slow dry medium, I think, is what's in here as well as just a little bit of distilled water and the reason why I did that is because it creates a much better paint. Uh, I can put this paint through an airbrush. I would thin it out just a little bit to put it through an airbrush. There we go. And it also, it, it, it's fantastic for painting on the glass. Um, I also added, I cannot remember what it is right now, but there's an additive that I use to it to help it adhere to glass better. And I cannot remember what that is. I do remember um, it is about um, my, I have several colors of these paints that I made, and each one of them is about the same amount color and glazing medium. although they have a little bit of distilled water in them also to, to thin them out just a little bit. Now the reason why I do the, the stars first is you're going to see this from the other side, which means that everything I want to be in the front of your view has to be my very first coat. So there we go, we've got that done. That should be pretty dry. This stuff does not take very long to dry. Now normally I would use an airbrush and you can see I've used these. These are just scotch bright pads that I've ripped into different shapes. These make fantastic nebulas. They also make great clouds when you airbrush through them. But I'm going to be using it as a paintbrush today. And I think the first thing we're going to add is a little bit of blue. Make sure I'm nice and shook up. And I'm just using the tip. It's a little off camera and I apologize for that, but I'm using the tip of this cutting pad as my palette. Now, for painting on glass, it is important to try to keep as much paint off of your hands 
and off of your work surface as possible. I'm not too worried about these stars because they do dry pretty quickly, as you can see. But I'm going to take just a little bit of this blue. First, I'm going to dip this in a little bit of water because I want that blue to be a little bit thinner. Now, this is a pretty translucent color to begin with. There we go. I'm just going to start in a corner here. I'm going to build it up just a touch. Now, this will take longer to dry because I have added water to it. But I want to have... Oh, think about if, you, if you've ever watched those uh, uh, spray paint artists that make the spray paint uh, spacescapes. Uh, just think about how they build up their nebulas. They kind of have a tendency to, to streak them along and have similar colors on one side or the other of the canvas. And the reason for that, the reason that looks better, is because of Doppler shifting. <laughs> I love to look at Hubble uh, telescope pictures. I love looking at them. I'm going to go a little bit thicker here. I'm just adding paint, not water. I love looking at the Hubble telescope pictures, the deep space pictures that it gets because there's so much amazing color in space and you just don't think looking up at the night sky that there's really all that much color up there. But there's a tremendous amount of color up there all the time that you just don't see because it's so dim and so far away. Thousands of light years away. There we go. Now I'm going to use a technique I haven't used before so hopefully this works. But this is a technique I've used for um, resin. A quick way to get rid of surface bubbles is to simply heat them up a little bit. There we go. And that got rid of them all. Fantastic. And I'll tilt this up just a little bit to get the glare out. And you can see how that's just a little transparent. Let me show you the other side. And as you're building, as, I, as I'm building up these colors, unless you're following along, but as you're building up these colors, you'll see them start to uh, express through each other, but they won't look very strong until the very end, the very last couple of steps that we're going to do. So now I've got blue on there. I think I'm going to add some red. Let's see what we've got in the way of red. I don't have a red color mixed up in these airbrush colors, but I do have transparent red for my airbrush. Let me get that on cam camera here. No, I am not endorsed. These are just really good airbrush colors. Now I use these when I'm doing some more professional airbrush work, but for paintings like this, typically I won't use those colors. Typically I will mix up my own colors. Honestly, there's not a lot of difference in the final product, whether I mix it up with the cheap acrylic paints from the uh, from the crafting section of the store, or if I, I'm just trying to get a clean bit here, or if I use the expensive uh, Createx paints, we end up with just about a similar result anyway. Now I'm not going to add any water to the red because this is a transparent color which means anything I put behind it will already show through naturally. There we go. I just want to get those two... Well, let me spread this out just a little bit more. I want it to look Spacey and soft and kind of billowy, like it's like it's got the cosmic winds blowing through it. You know, millions of years of cosmic wind. And I was talking about those Hubble paint, those Hubble uh, pictures before. Uh, Hubble's obviously not painting space; that would be ridiculous. But. Uh, 
you don't appreciate the sheer size. You hear about the magnification of these nebulas that it shows, but not about the sheer size of these nebulas. They're, they're absolutely enormous. They are light years across. And just to keep that in perspective, our solar system is just about eight light hours across. No, oh, that's not right. I'm going to have to look up the, the correct size. But to send a message from Earth to Mars and back takes about 16 minutes. From Earth to the moon and back is about three seconds. And that's radio frequencies. Radio frequencies travel at the speed of light. From the Earth to the Sun is just about eight minutes. So when you're reading science fiction, and I read a lot of science fiction, and I come across those terms a lot, the, uh, the, air, the field of engagement is eight light seconds. Well, eight light seconds is like four times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. <laughs> that's, that's like... Uh, I don't know, 300,000 kilometers from the Earth to the Moon? <laughs> and, and, oh, it, 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 it is hilarious to me that, first of all, we're supposed to believe that in that volume of space, I mean, eight light seconds, that volume of space is just a ridiculous amount of space, of nothing. And when Hubble zooms in on these nebulas and it has... You know, the magnification is just some completely fantastic number. And you think about magnifications like that being like subatomic particle kind of is what you're looking at at those magnifications when you're talking about through a microscope. And it's looking at something that is hundreds of thousands of light years thick of just fog and, and dense uh, dust. But when you get if you were to fly a spaceship into those nebulas and actually be inside of those nebulas the density is so low that you probably wouldn't see anything <laughs> let's see let's add a little bit of an orange in here just because i really like the color and oh i just sprayed it all over the place i hope i caught that on camera Grab my towel here. There we go. And I know I'm gabbing a lot and not painting as much as I probably should. And one of the reasons for that is because I do like to allow time for the paint to dry a little bit between layers. Now this is separating a little bit. You can really see what I used to make this orange. There we go. It's going to mix in a little bit with the, the red and the blue. And I'll put some up here too. Oh. During this process, when you're painting on glass, it is vitally important to flip your piece over frequently and take a look. Because you will see things Remember, you're painting backwards. You're not just painting in reverse, but you're painting it the opposite way you're going to look at it once you're finished. So here we go. I think it needed a little bit more orange in here. I like that a lot. And yellow. I definitely need a yellow in here. So we've got this orange. And... Here's a sunny yellow. Oh, this seems a little bit on the thick side. And by a little bit on the thick side, I mean completely dried. Oh, dear. <laughs> completely dried. 
Oh, that's okay. Let's see if we can get a little bit of color off of it. And what I'll do is I'll dip it in my water. Now this is an acrylic paint, so typically once it dries, and that's my phone. Oh, that was my alarm clock. Okay. And once it dries, it becomes, the reason why it's called acrylic is because that's literally the binder. It's, it's plastic. So I'm going to see if there's just enough left in here that is undried, and it looks like we've got some. Normally, I wouldn't even try to recover this, but hey, I'm already recording, so let's keep going. I'm going to put some yellow in behind there and just off of this edge. Not much. It does, and yellow shows up so much, so well, it does not take very much to show up. Uh, you can't quite see that on the camera. Yeah, yeah, I guess it does show up pretty well on camera. So, there we go. There we go. Thicken that up just a touch. And off in the blue. Okay. And just because it's looking pretty spotty now, I'm going to rip off a new piece of Brillo. Or Scotch Bright. This is Scotch Bright. This is not uh, steel wool. I'm going to go right back into my blue. And without any water at all, I'm going to try to even out the blue a little bit. Because it is pretty splotchy right now. It's kind of all over the place. And just for a reference, this color I mixed up about three years ago. And I mixed up far more than I really need. And I did not realize it at the time because I was spray painting these uh, glass paintings. I was airbrushing them. And for some reason it just seemed to me that I would go through so much more of this paint than I actually ended up going through. Now, that blue is mixed from this paint here. Uh, let me get you on camera. This uh, Ceramicoat paint. Now, I used these because the Ceramicoat is designed to go on glass. And Technically, it can be baked to set it in. I never actually did that. I did not do the baking to set it in. I don't know how it would shift the colors or if it would shift the colors, but it adheres to this glass incredibly well. So by extending it with glaze and, and water... Now, when you extend paint with water, always use distilled water. Uh, filtered water is kind of acceptable, but do not ever use tap water. And the reason for that is because it, it can and will grow mold. Now, just a little bit more of this paint. This is getting to a point where it's drying out fast. And you can't quite see it. I'm, I'm off camera. I'll just show you on camera. This is how much paint I'm putting out. That's it. <laughs> Unless the paint explodes all over my hands like you just saw a little while ago. That's all I'm using. So I'm going to put in a couple of areas of thick blue. There we go. Being very careful not to create bubbles like I did when I used the thinner stuff. And that is a problem with the thinner paint is it does bubble up. 
that there we go and I think that's all I'm going to do on the nebula let's take a look at that that's not bad it's not horrible <laughs> but there we go now I'm just going to go through this real quick now normally you wouldn't do this with acrylic paints at all but I do want them to be a little bit dry before the next step and since this these are not a flammable paint I'm not afraid of using the flame on them the trick with that is you want to keep it moving because you can burn your paint and you don't want to burn your paint okay so the next step is I'm going to take the cap off of my black first and then shake it up there we go that way hopefully we don't have an explosion again yay and we'll just get a little bit out here for now and I'm going to apply it the same way that I've been applying all the other colors and the reason is because I don't want existing colors to shift while I'm applying it and I'm afraid if I use an, a, a paintbrush that might happen now when I did the Doctor Who painting the TARDIS painting that I showed you I did most of that with an airbrush so I was not having concerns about shifting the paint around while applying the final rear coat and the, the backmost portion of that the, the darkest part of that black is several layers thick of this uh, and by several layers I mean two or three layers it's not incredibly thick especially when you're airbrushing you're, you're adding microns at a time that's not even microns microns are probably too big of a measurement but the last coat the final coat on the back I took it outside and I used a uh, black enamel on the back just a uh, spray can of enamel and that protects these things really really well so there we go we're getting to the final part of this and we're going to need just a touch more of the black paint And I should have planned ahead more so I'm not reaching across the camera and filling up the entire camera view with my uh, thick forearms. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if they were thick in the good way, but it is what it is, right? There we go. And just a touch more. Now people often make the mistake when they're painting, regardless of the medium, of putting out more paint than they're going to use. The uh, idea being that paint doesn't cost much, and I'm sorry, but not costing much and being free are two completely different things. And especially when you're an artist, it's important to be frugal. <laughs> it does not take a long time to go put another drop of paint out for you and it's kind of ridiculous to go and waste paint that you're not going to use just because you want to be sure you have enough out now the only paint that I have out that I put way too much of is that white and the reason is because as I said I mixed these paints up about three years ago and I do not often pull them out to do these paintings with so the the air inside has a tendency to expand and add a little extra pressure inside and I do forget about that when I pull them out again to paint now just want to make sure I keep this flame moving I don't want to burn any part of this especially because 
I still see little bubbles popping. Um, especially because uh, this is acrylic and not glass. So I do not want to melt the, the medium itself. So let's take a look at the front. And there we go. We've got a little tiny nebula. Let me remember where the center of the camera is. A little tiny nebula on a little tiny, um, well, it was sold as a glass tile, but it's acrylic. It's clearly acrylic uh, tile. Now, we can use these techniques and actually scale it up. And that's what I'm going to do when I do the uh, the home world painting. Now I see I'm going on about a half hour here. I was expecting this to be a little bit faster. So I'm going to cut it here. I'll make this its own video and uh, I'll come back in a day or two. You'll see the video for the uh, curved glass painting of, uh, of home world. Thank you for joining me on Ram Dragon Art and Games. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, especially if you like seeing content like this, um, you might want to join my, my Patreon. Uh, I've also put up a GoFundMe because I would like to st actually start a, a studio where I can teach other art students, other artists, younger artists than myself, obviously, um, a variety of different techniques. Now, I don't do just painting. And you've seen me do some digital art. You've seen me do some uh, some traditional art now. But uh, I, I do a lot of different things. I do a lot of sculpture. I do some uh, I do some woodwork. Uh, let, me, let me grab one of these. I love these. Uh, I do these little woodworking projects. I, I love these things. These are a lot of fun to make. <laughs> They're just thumb drives I tear the, the plastic cases off of them and I make these wooden cases for them it's a tremendous amount of fun I get a, a great deal of compliments from these this is the most recent one I did I like it a lot with this uh, copper braid I put in there and I learned a lot by doing those but uh, I, I've learned a variety of different techniques I work metal I work wood um, I paint I do a lot of different things and I would like to give other people, other students, an opportunity to learn those things from me. I had a mentor when I was younger who taught me how to airbrush. And I use those techniques almost every time I'm painting. Um, when I painted this, you did not see me use an airbrush. But I guarantee you, I used techniques that I learned from airbrushing. Um, Layering colors, dealing with transparency, um, painting with that transparency, especially building up colors. Those are all techniques that are directly applied from learning how to airbrush. Now I've set this down on the uh, <laughs> on the cutting mat here and it's still wet. So I'm going to have to clean up before I start the next video. But uh, please join me for the next one and you'll see uh, a little bit more of how I paint a planet into a spacescape. Thanks again. Join me next time.